that something is rotten in the state of Britain is probably the statement of the bleeding obvious that I have ever made. It's rotten from top right down to the toe, a gangrenous toe, if you'll forgive me. We are in a very parlous state in the United Kingdom. All of our institutions are hollowed out from the collapse in trust in the police service, the collapse in the standard of justice evident in the treatment of Julian Assange, the collapse in anything remotely resembling a free and independent media in this country, the collapse in the caliber of parliament, about which more later, where once upon a time when I first entered the House of Commons 37 years ago, there were a hundred or more men and women of independent mind, of stature, who when they rose, no one could predict exactly what they were going to say, but everyone stayed in their place in order to hear it. Compare and contrast with the political dwarves sitting all around me in the British Parliament today, most of whom I simply have never seen or heard of before. Compare the great speakers of the House of Commons that I have sat under. Sir Bernard Wetherill, Dame Betty Boothroyd, even little Berkow with the, well, Calamity Jane figure of Lindsay Hoyle, who was out today in all his miserable lack of pomp. He managed to allow a race row that has brewed and broken in Britain, in which the Conservative Party's biggest donor, who donated £10 million to the British Conservative Party, and in return, yes, in return, got £122 million of contracts with Britain's National Health Service, was recorded saying that the Labour Member of Parliament, Diane Abbott, should be shot, and that when he looks at her, he begins to hate all black women. Now, in today's era of political correctness, you just can't say things like that, especially if you're the government party's biggest financial donor, especially if you hold the gong order of the British Empire, especially if you are influential at the very top ranks of the British government. This is a racist and misogynistic piece of hate speech, as was widely recognized in the House of Commons today. The leader of the opposition, no less, no more, Sir Keir Starmer, thought the story so important that he donated half of his questions to the Prime Minister, to this scandalous misogynoir against his one-time parliamentary colleague, Diane Abbott. The Prime Minister replied several times how completely unacceptable these remarks were, though not so unacceptable that he was minded to hand back the £10 million donation. The man had said, sorry, he said, and remorse, where genuine, should always be accepted. Although I could give you many hundreds of examples where remorse, like Shamima Begum, she defected to ISIS, became an ISIS bride, was groomed as a young schoolgirl. She's deeply remorseful about having done it now, but the British government, Rishi Sunak's British government, actually ripped up her passport and deported her effectively to Bangladesh because her grandparents came from there. A good example where remorse is simply not enough. This multi, multi-millionaire conservative donor should have been called before the bar of the house and should have on his knees bathed the feet of Diane Abbott. But he's out of Scott 
free. Nothing will ever be said or done against him, least of all will his 122 million contract with Britain's National Health Service be rescinded. But why am I dwelling on this point? The Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition exchanged at least six questions and answers on the case of Diane Abbott. She was then spoken about by the leader of the Scottish National Party, a fella called Flynn, I think. He also donated two of his parliamentary questions to this foul, racially and, uh, and gender-related smear against a long-standing member of the House of Commons, and the Prime Minister had to answer them in the same terms that he had answered the leader of the opposition. Everyone in the room was talking about her as if she wasn't there. But she was there, resplendent in a red jacket, just a few yards along the back bench from me. And as I was rising, every time to be called myself, I could see with my right eye that Diane Abbott was rising to be called also. Unbelievably, the Speaker of the House of Commons did not call her to speak, even though everybody else was speaking only about her. Compounding insult added to injury. You're talking about a race row? The black woman who's been attacked is there and trying to speak and is not called. Now, at the time I was thinking, how is the speaker possibly going to justify not allowing a woman that everyone else is talking about to speak for herself? I knew he'd have difficulty. I didn't know he'd make such a poor job of defending it after the fact. He said, they ran out of time. Except they didn't run out of time. Prime Minister's questions is supposed to last 30 minutes. Today it lasted for 38 minutes. And he still didn't call the woman of the moment. Now, look, I called her a princess earlier. She is kind of a left-wing black princess. She was one of only 17 black Cambridge University graduates in the whole of the 1970s. She was one of the only women to graduate from Cambridge from a black West Indian minority ethnic background. All of it worthy of some respect, I should have said. And she became Britain's first black woman member of parliament. She entered history as Britain's first ever black woman member of parliament. Worthy of some respect, worthy of being called to ask a question, at least a prime minister's questions about herself. But no, not only did the speaker not call her, the leader of the opposition mercilessly exploited this race row for his own party political purposes without referring to the fact that he himself has suspended Diane Abbott from the parliamentary Labour Party with only months at best away from a general election in which she will not be allowed to stand as a Labour candidate after nearly 40 years on the House of Commons benches as a Labour MP. The reason why he suspended her? Some letter she wrote to an obscure British newspaper, which, having looked at it, I can't even begin to imagine what was exceptionable about it. Certainly nothing as exceptionable as what has now, and indeed throughout her parliamentary career, been said 
about her. She's haughty. She's imperious. She's grand. She's a grand dame. And while some might find that difficult, I personally kiss her hand. And the idea that this black woman should be spoken about by this William Zanzinger in this multi-millionaire scandal is utterly repugnant and speaks to the way that the ruling British elite really feel about women, really feel about black people, really feel about black women in particular. Now, there's another princess in the news, or rather not in the news. I'm old enough to remember what happened with Lady Di, Lady Diana, Princess Diana, how she was cheated on by her husband, now the king of the United Kingdom and whatever remaining parts of the Commonwealth recognize him as their head of state, as their monarch. I'm old enough to have watched in real time how she was treated by this British royal family, the Windsors. I watched The Crown on Netflix. It was like the story of my lifetime, almost exactly coterminous with my lifetime. I watched it with great interest. And I know how the Windsors treat the wives, and in the case of Princess Margaret, the putative husband, group captain Peter Townsend. I know how they behave. I know the medieval brutishness with which they respond to wives that have fallen out of favor. Think Henry VIII. Now I'm sure that something rotten is going on inside Buckingham Palace, inside Windsor Castle, inside Sandringham. I'm absolutely sure that there's something we are not being told about the health of the head of state. If he was just an ordinary guy, it would be none of my business. But why don't we know what kind of cancer the head of state of Britain has? Because then we might be able to evaluate whether he's going to last another six weeks or could last another six, ten 16, 20 years. We have a right to know that. He's the head of state, albeit an utterly unelected one. I want to know what's happened to the next queen of the United Kingdom and the mother of the next but one king of the United Kingdom. I have a right to know not only am I a subject, because that's what we are called, folks, a subject of these people, not only do we have to pay a king's ransom for these people in order for them to rule over us, but I'm an elected member of King Charles's parliament. It's actually called his parliament. If I don't swear allegiance to him, I will not be allowed to sit down in the parliament, even if everybody in Rochdale had voted for me. Most people did. A crushing majority of people did, but even if everybody had, I would not be allowed to sit down unless I pledged allegiance, not only to him, but his heirs and his successors. But who are to be his heirs and his successors? What's happened to Kate? It's almost 80 days since she was seen in public. Such was the mounting concern about that in the country that they eventually published a photograph for Mother's Day of the aforementioned Princess Kate, looking marvelous, I must say, for a woman off sick after an ab 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 abdominal operation, wearing tight jeans, I thought, 
My goodness, she's recovered well. Except by the evening, all of the major news agencies issued a kill notice. I hope that's not uh, hostage to fortune. A kill notice killing their circulation of this photograph. Why? Because it had been faked, fabricated, photoshopped. Now, they haven't told us which parts of the picture were photoshopped, but it's a fair guess that it was Kate that was photoshopped. Perhaps she's not looking that well. Perhaps she wasn't even there. I'm demanding habeas corpus. Produce the body. Proof of life. We need to know, have a right to know, if the Princess of Wales is alive. Is she well? What happened to her? Did she try to harm herself? Did somebody else try to harm her? What are they covering up inside the British elite? The British elite is rotten to the core. And this growing royal scandal, where they cannot produce, never mind the body, even a picture in nearly 80 days, not one picture. This is a woman who, when she gave birth three times, came out to a barrage of press photographers within hours of having given birth and gone through labor. Nearly 80 days, not even one single picture. So when Press Association and Reuters and all the others issued their kill notice, they knew they were in trouble, so they presumably forced her, her, from her sick bed to say, actually, it was all her fault. She's an amateur photo editor. And if you believe that, I've got a bridge here in London that I can sell you going cheap. She took the blame for the, producing, for the production of a fake photograph that was on its way to being published all over the world, except it was a fake. So they produced a second picture purporting to be her, in a car with William, except she was looking the other way, in the dark, and no one could claim that they knew that it was her in that picture. Might have been somebody else. And there is a somebody else. We can infer from all the coverage that like father, like son, William's been cheating on his beautiful wife for a definitely less beautiful alternative, just as Charles was cheating on his beautiful wife with a very definitely inferior model. She was at the Cheltenham horse racing today. She fitted in really well, if you get my drift. The third picture that they produced was so riven with glaring, glaring, obvious error that that too has now been accepted as being a fake. So we now have a situation where the heir to the throne has a wife, the mother of the next heir to the throne, who's gone missing. And no one in the royal family will explain what's going on. One man, David Clues, one outfit, Unity Network News, frequently reviled as conspiracy theorists until their conspiracy theories turn out to be true. They've been right ahead of the pack on this. They're the horse in front. And David Clues comes up right now here on the mother of all talk shows.